Hey, what's up guys? My name is Samuel Leeds. I'm a property investor and I wanted to do a Q&A where people have an opportunity to ask me questions, but I've picked the questions that are all around mortgages. So I've been getting so many questions about mortgages. So this Q&A Sunday, the theme is going to be mortgages. If you like the idea of doing a themed Q&A Sunday, then let me know in the comments below. Just say themes are good. Let me know maybe what you want the next theme to be. If you'd prefer them to be not themed and just random questions, then just comment below and let me know that you just want random questions, no theme. Please comment below. Theme, no theme, comment below. A mortgage is a mortgage is a mortgage. All a mortgage means is it is a loan for you to go and buy a house. That's what a mortgage is. So the different types of mortgages, all that means is it, the mortgage has got different a uh, different purpose. So if you're buying a, if you're buying a um, if you're buying a, a property to live in, then it's a residential mortgage. If you're buying a house to rent out, it's a buy to rent out, buy to let mortgage. That, hopefully that makes it real simple. If it's a HMO property, then it's a HMO mortgage because that's the specific purpose of the loan is to buy a HMO. So don't overcomplicate it by thinking, oh my gosh, what type kind of mortgage? Now, um, if you're buying a HMO property, depending on the type of HMO, if it's just, you know, you're just renting out three or four rooms, it's a completely normal house, it might be that a lender will just say, it's just a buy to let mortgage but with consent to rent the rooms out. So buy to let mortgage with consent to rent the rooms out. So it really depends how the lender will see it, but my advice is to just be completely open and honest and transparent. Don't try and get a mortgage on a property and call it something else. Don't pretend you're gonna live there if you're not. Don't pretend it's gonna be a single let if actually you're trying to rent it out as a serviced accommodation units. Just be honest, open and upfront, and if the lender's not happy with it, then find another lender that is. So mortgage what do we got? So SM1 says, do you prefer interest only mortgages with product fees but lower rates or without product fees and higher rates? And do you always add the product fee to the loan amount? Any help would be much appreciated. Thank you for your question. So I always prefer lower fees. I'm very happy to pay a, and by fee, what this, what this means is a mortgage broker's fee. A mortgage broker's fee is usually in the hundreds of pounds, unless it's like a large purchase, um, but you shouldn't pay more than 1% max of the purchase price for a broker's fee. I'm happy to pay a fee, and the reason I'm happy to pay a fee is because I like to get the lowest rate, the best type of lender, the least hassle, and I've found in my experience that in the long run, you'll save money by using a broker and you'll save time. So I don't really, there's an old saying that says, watch the pennies and the pounds will look after themselves. I actually disagree with that statement. I think that if you focus too much on the pennies, you lose the pounds because where your focus goes, that will expand and energy flows. So that's the answer to the first half of the question. The second part of the question was, do I add the product fee onto the loan amount? Which means that the money that I pay the mortgage broker, their fee, I actually add that onto the loan, so I don't pay it up front. It just becomes part of the part of the mortgage. Uh, yes, I always do that if I can. If, if the mortgage company lets me do that, I'm gonna do it. Why? Because I want to pay as little money now and get as much cash flow as I can. I'm not trying to be uh, debt free, I'm trying to be financially free, so I always do that. Hope that answered the question. Let's see what else we've got in regards to mortgages. Harley says, what are your thoughts on overpayments on mortgages? Do you think that they are beneficial in any way? The answer to that is probably not. So I'd rather overpay a mortgage than be on repayment mortgages. People that go on repayment mortgages, I think are stupid because if you go on a repayment mortgage, all that's saying is you have no choice. You have to pay back X amount every month. I'd rather be on interest only and then just overpay if I want. Then I'm, I'm not a slave. I'm not controlled what I do with, with, with my monthly cash flow. However, I, I, I don't think I would do that. Why would you overpay the mortgage? Instead, I would rather use that money and instead of overpaying the mortgage, I would use it and save it towards a deposit on another house. 
because I don't want to be debt free, I want to be financially free, I don't want to own properties outright, I want to leverage my money and the bank's money and have, as, and have as many, as big of a portfolio with as much cash flow as I possibly can. So I wouldn't overpay on the mortgages, no. Daniel Davis says, interest only, then property drops 30%, then what? <laughs> okay, get this a lot. So what happens if the property drops in value? You know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. It doesn't affect me. If I've got, if I've bought a house for 150,000 pounds and I've borrowed 100,000 pounds and my mortgage is 100 grand and I'm paying 4% interest only. So I'm paying 4,000 pounds a year, which is probably gonna be about, what, like 360 pounds a month. But my rent is seven, hundred pound a month and I'm in profit. No matter what happens to the purchase price or, or the value of the property, so no matter what happens to that value, it doesn't affect my it doesn't affect my mortgage payments. It doesn't affect my rent. So the value of the property can go up, it can go down, but you should never buy a property with the intention to sell it unless you're doing a flip. But generally speaking, if you buy a property and the price drops, it doesn't matter. If the value drops, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, it's gonna go up over time. History repeats itself and that's how we know that. So I'm not worried about the property dropping in value at all. Even if I'm in negative equity, even if my mortgage is 100 grand and the value of the house is 80 grand, and I've got no equity at all in that property. I don't care. All I care about is that that property is making me cash flow every single month. That's it. So I hope that helps. So next we've got Abulkar Ahmed who says, hi Samuel, what about if my credit score is low? Is it still possible for a buy to let mortgage? And the answer is absolutely yes. I'm not a mortgage advisor, so I can't, I can't give you bespoke mortgage advice without knowing your situation. I wouldn't be qualified to do that anyway. But okay, let me tell you this. Your, the, the, the lenders, the banks, they don't care that much about you when it comes to you buying buy to let properties. They care more about the buy to let properties because when you're buying a house to live in, it's your home, they care about you because the home is a liability, meaning it doesn't give you any income, it loses money. So when you're buying a home, the banks wanna know, can you afford to live in this home? So they'll ask you questions like, how much do you earn? Let's see your credit and they'll wanna see it's really good, they'll wanna see, they'll do affordability checks on you and on the home. But when you're buying a property investment to rent out, they're, they're, they're not that interested in you all of a sudden. <laughs> That's why people that have got zero income, no income, people that have got county court judgments against their name, bad credit, the banks are still lending them money. Not, not to say guaranteed, but in many instances, they're still lending money. Why? Because they'll say, let's have a look at the house that you want to have money for. The house is good. The house is gonna pay the bank, not you. Does that make sense? So with buy to let, it's less important about you, it's more important about, about the house. When you're, when you're borrowing bridging finance, especially, they do not care about you. They don't care about your credit. They don't care about your background. They care about the house, which is why it's important to be able to find good houses. The first thing you need to be able to do as a property investor is find good houses. You find good houses, there'll be good finance for you, believe me. Um, I mean, geez, I'll finance the deal if it's a good enough house. So w that's really important. If you've been told no by your bank, for every single question about mortgage advice, I can give you, I can give you my experience, but the, the, I'll, I'll usually always end with, go and speak to a good broker because you always want to have a good broker. If your bank tells you no, I've, I've had situations where 72 year old ladies are trying to are coming on my crash course and then are trying to do deals and their bank is telling them, no way, we can't lend to you. And then they write themselves off. They say, I can't get a mortgage. But then what happens is they go and speak to a good broker, or my broker, anyone that does any advanced training with me will get access to my power team and everything, everything by the way. You speak to a good broker, suddenly they'll, they have access to all the banks and they'll find a broker that fits you bespoke. So hopefully that helps. Let's see what else we got on the, on the subject of mortgages. Maybe one or two more. Okay, SSHNRUB says, if you do the RRR strategy, I, I assume you mean the RRR strategy is uh, buy, refurb, refinance, rent. So it's when you add value to a house and refinance it. 
Would you get away with buying and buying with a buy to let mortgage and then refinancing once? As banks don't like it, I know bridging loans is the usual way of doing this. Okay, if you're buying a house with the whole intention of adding value to it and then refinancing it, when you first get the house, you don't wanna get a normal buy to let mortgage on the house. And the reason is because normally when you get a buy to let mortgage, uh, there are fees involved, but also you'll have usually like a minimum of maybe two year fixed. And there's no point getting a buy to let mortgage just to then in a few months time, get another buy to let mortgage. Cause you're just gonna get, you're just gonna have to pay a lot more money. You're gonna get fines and all kinds of stuff like penalty fines. So the simplest way to do it is to buy the property cash add value cash and then refinance and then pull all your money back out and then with that cash do it again and do it again and do it again and keep doing it until you own as many houses as you possibly can before the rules change or whatever now if you haven't got the cash that's when you're going to need to get a bridging finance or use other people's money or get a joint venture so yeah don't use a buy to let for that first instance Hope that helps. So guys, that's about all, all we've got time for today on the mortgage Q&A. Next week, uh, we're gonna do another Q&A. So if you've got questions uh, about property, comment them below. I'll do my best to try and answer as many as I can. Also, don't forget to let me know, do you think we should do themed or non-themed? Comment below as well. I wanna see as many comments below, themed or non-themed. The more comments you type below as well, it always helps the YouTube algorithm, which means that we'll get more views, which then incentivizes me to make more content. So comment below. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to smash that like button. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Love you forever. I'll see you next week. Thank you.